Today, I'm going to show you how to turn these simple ingredients into the ultimate comfort food. Whoa! Chicken pot pie. The creamy vegetable and protein filling is baked in a buttery, flaky crust. And if you're lucky, you'll have enough for leftovers. Let's get started. To make the pie crust, you're going to need one and three quarter cups of unsalted butter. We're going to cut them into half inch pieces. Cutting them into these size cubes is going to give you a nice flaky crust. Make sure to keep the butter chilled until you're ready to add it to the flour. I'm going to use a stand mixer to make the pie dough, but you could also use your hands or even a food processor. I have three cups of all-purpose flour in the mixer, and I'm going to add a half teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix that on low speed for about 10 seconds. Now I'm going to add my chilled butter. Just stir it on the lowest setting just to coat the flour on the butter. Just pulse it a few times. The flour is coated on the butter. Now we're gonna stir it on the lowest setting for about 60 to 75 seconds until the butter breaks down to the size of a pea. This looks good. You'll see that there's some coarse pieces that I just break up with my finger back into the flour. Don't forget to check the bottom of the bowl for some larger pieces. This looks good, now we can add the water. I have three quarter cups of chilled ice water that I'm going to add one tablespoon in at a time. We're not going to use all the water, just about eight to ten tablespoons until the flour is hydrated. And then just stir for about one to two seconds. Adding in cold water is going to ensure that the butter doesn't melt. I added about 8 tablespoons. The dough looks nice and hydrated. And when you press it together, it clumps, so it's ready. I have 2 pounds of pie dough and we're going to separate them into 2 evenly sized discs. That's going to make the top crust and the bottom crust. Form them into one inch thick discs, and then you're going to chill it for four hours. This is going to allow the gluten protein in the dough to relax so that when you roll it out and bake the pie crust, it won't be tough. Okay, just wrap them individually in plastic wrap. and then we're going to take them to the refrigerator and let them chill. I happen to have some pie dough that I made the night before. They're really good to make two days in advance so that you can take them out whenever you're ready to make the pie. We're going to start with the top crust. It helps to take the pie crust out about five to 10 minutes before rolling so it's easier to roll out. I lightly dust the cutting board with some flour as well as my rolling pin. And we're going to roll it out into about a quarter inch thick or about 13 inches. Just keep turning and rolling. <laughs> this looks good. Just transfer it to a parchment paper lined sheet pan. Now we're going to make the bottom crust. Okay, this looks about 13 inches and a quarter inch thick. I'm going to transfer it to a nine inch pie dish. And just lay it on top. And press the dough flush with the pan. Now just take a paring knife or you could use kitchen shears and trim off the excess dough. 
just flush against the edge of the pie dish. Now that the pie crusts are rolled out and ready, I'm going to chill them in the refrigerator, but in the meanwhile, we can make the chicken filling. I have one and a half pounds of chicken breasts, and I'm going to cut them into two pieces so that they cook quickly and evenly. So I'll just slice them down the middle like this. Some grocery stores sell thin cut pieces of chicken breast, so you could use that as well. Now just season each side with salt and pepper. The chicken is seasoned, let's head over to the stove. Set the oven rack to the middle position. Preheat to 375 degrees. Heat a large skillet with high sides or a Dutch oven over medium heat. Once hot, add one tablespoon of olive oil. Add the chicken and cook for six minutes. Flip over and cook until the internal temperature reaches 160 to 165 degrees, about five to seven minutes. Turn off the heat and transfer to a clean plate. Reserve the pan to cook the rest of the filling. The chicken has cooled down, so now I'm going to shred it into smaller pieces. I really like sauteing the chicken breast because as you can see, there's all this beautiful golden brown crust on the surface. So a lot more flavor in your pie. Also, if you have leftover whole roasted chicken or turkey from a big feast, you could just shred that up and add three cups to the filling and it makes it a lot quicker. And it's a really yummy way to use your leftovers. <laughs> Heat the same pan used to cook the chicken over medium heat. Melt one third cup butter in the pan. Add the one cup of diced onions and one tablespoon minced garlic. Saute until translucent, about two minutes. Add one cup celery, one cup carrots, one teaspoon rosemary and one teaspoon thyme. Saute for three minutes. Add one cup sliced mushrooms and saute for one minute. Add two cups diced potatoes, one and a half teaspoon salt, and a half teaspoon black pepper. Stir, then cover and cook until the potatoes are tender, about nine to 10 minutes. Make sure to stir the vegetables every two minutes to prevent burning. Sprinkle in one third cup flour, stir and cook for two minutes. Slowly pour in one and a half cups chicken stock and one cup heavy cream. Stir constantly until a thick and smooth sauce forms about two to three minutes. It should coat the back of a spoon. Turn off the heat. Add the shredded chicken, a half a cup of peas, and two tablespoons chopped parsley. Stir to combine. Wow, the filling looks really good. It's hearty and creamy. And I'm just going to transfer the filling to a sheet pan to quickly cool it down. We don't want to add hot filling to the pie crust. We want to cool it down to about room temperature and that's gonna take about 20 minutes. If you wanna speed up the process, you could also pop it in the refrigerator and cool it that way. The chicken filling has cooled down. We're gonna add it to the pie crust now. Just add it in an even layer. What's great about this filling too is you could have continued to cool it in the refrigerator for about two days, making a really nice make of head meal. The reason why we cool the filling is so that the butter doesn't melt in the bottom of the crust. I like to sprinkle it with just a little bit more black pepper on top. And now we're ready to add the top crust. Just lay it over my hand and place it on top. Okay, so press the crust down on the edges and then trim it so that there's about a half inch overhang. That way we can tuck the top crust under the bottom crust. Okay, now just tuck the edges underneath like this and press. Wanna make sure when you slice the pieces, they stay together. And it's up to you how you wanna do the design on the edges. You could just use the tines of a fork to make little, just like little marks on the pie, or I like to do the fluted design. So you can just pinch 
and then use your thumb to kind of go around. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to add some egg wash on top. It's just one large egg that I whisked and this is gonna give it a deeper golden brown color. Now you want to create a few vents on the top so that the filling doesn't get all soggy inside. So I'll cut six vents about three quarter inches long and then a little bit more salt and pepper on top since it's a savory pie. Now you're going to take a foil lined sheet pan, place the pie on top and we are gonna bake this at 375 degrees until the crust is nice and golden brown on the top and the sides, about 60 to 70 minutes. Wow, the pie is gorgeous. The surface and the sides are golden brown. I'm going to let it sit on the baking sheet for about five minutes and then transfer it to a wire rack for 45 minutes. This is gonna give the pie a chance to firm up so that when you slice it, it doesn't fall apart. I can't wait. The wait is over, let's cut a slice. Ooh, I can see the little flakes come off on the pie already, that's a good sign. Ooh, it's gorgeous. Nice and creamy, flaky, buttery crust. Definitely a winner. When I make my roasted chicken recipe right here, I have tons of leftover to make this pie. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind chicken pot pie. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. Time to take a bite. This is so good, you're not gonna wanna miss out on it.